I think I get what you were going for, man, but they have to actually be in the water for the for you to blow them out of it. You should maybe rethink your title as the pun isher. Oh, I, I hate myself. This stage has my favorite music in the game by far, and it's also where we see Scully again, but this time as a regular enemy instead of as a boss. He only takes three, uh, hold still please, he only takes three suplexes to destroy completely. His most obnoxious attack is that one where he dashes across the screen. But once you get a hold of him, just camp out on top of him and grab him again as soon as he stands up. Should be no problem. He doesn't deal very much damage either, so his biggest threat really is wasting that timer up there in the top of the screen. Unlike a lot of other beat-em-ups where the timer is simply there to prevent you from being methodical, the timer in Punisher is a genuine part of the challenge. It's very easy for the time to run out without you even noticing it. You're more likely to die to the timer than to the actual enemies in my experience. There's honestly not that many beat-em-ups where the time limit is an actual issue, so it's kind of notable when it when it actually occurs. I mean, Dynasty Warriors has a time limit for the sake of having a time limit because it's a beat-em-up. But those time limits run up to 60 minutes long, and there's no way you're gonna run out there. It doesn't really seem to matter what color of Scully you're going up against. The red variation of Scully seems to be identical to the gray variation and the blue and green variations. The same strategy is used to defeat all of them. Oh yeah, we may not have covered that the regular weakest enemies can do a jump kick, but it deals very little damage, and really those enemies are just cannon fodder in general. I consider the knife enemies to be the more regular enemies, simply because they're the first enemies that pose an actual challenge. I think we finally get to see a new enemy type up here shortly, but only after another shootout. Well, there is one during the shootout, but that's not as important. It's this heavily armored guy that's going to be over here on the left of the screen. This guy. He drops a gun every time we defeat him, and it's a really powerful and useful gun. But it doesn't lock on like our pistol does. So yeah, you can fire a straight stream of death out of it, but you can also fire a straight stream of death out of your pistol. And that one locks on. The only reason to be using the assault rifle instead is to spice things up for variety's sake. Otherwise, just stick to your pistol. I did say it was useful, just not more useful than what we already have. I'm kind of curious how they managed to drive that limo over that huge concrete bump. I just seem to remember it gliding right into place. Maybe it's a hover car. I'm sure that if anyone could afford a hover car, it would be the Kingpin. But then again, hover cars are also very impractical, so... The Kingpin doesn't seem like an impractical fellow. At least I don't think he's supposed to be. Oh man, I forgot there were more enemies before the new enemy types. Let's just skip to the end of this wave, shall we? Because it's nothing you haven't already seen. And there's really no new strategy I could offer you here. You remember these ninjas from the previous stage? Not to worry, they are not the new enemy type. It is a bit interesting to fight them in a more closed-in area this time, but the basic strategy against them remains the same. And they're only difficult if you don't know what all their moves are. Ow. Like that. This cyborg fellow, on the other hand, is the new enemy type. He moves very slowly, and he's very easy to assault, very easy to pick up, very easy to punch. Really, he's just weak to all forms of attack. You shouldn't underestimate him, though. He has an incredibly devastating grab, all of the cyborgs do. It takes forever for him to use, which drains your timer, and also kills you really hard. When you lift him up, you also can't do that jumping suplex like you can with the other characters, presumably because he's simply too heavy for that. But yeah, really, the only thing you need to worry about is when you see his arm extend to grab you, move up or down immediately. Otherwise, you're in for a bad time. So we don't have much room to move up here. I recommend making liberal use of your basic throw to get the enemies on one side or the other, and then just wail on them with your punches. Pretty simple, they don't have much room to move, you don't either, but it works out in your favor in the end. 
These guys with the caps take a lot of hits, even from a weapon, so you can easily waste an entire katana on them. But that's okay, because our fists work just fine. Maybe not exactly as well, but just fine. And then we proceed to the other side of the scaffolding, where the idea is exactly the same as it was previously. Except this time we're going to throw them over here where we have more space to move. And then we're going to jump down in the middle for some reason. I mean, I feel like we could have jumped down in the middle to get to the boss right away. But maybe the Punisher really wanted to methodically kill everyone. The end goal is not just to find the Kingpin and finish the stage, it's to kill everybody. Everybody you see, unless they're a good guy, but they're probably not. And, you know, that's not your responsibility. Nobody... Nobody said you had to discern that. Well, I don't think people usually die in someone else's blood, so... The Bonebreaker is a tank. And his weakness is getting kicked in the face. Using your normal punches is a really bad idea. But your kicks push him back when you use them. So they're the best way to assault him. He can also throw grenades and shoot at you. But really, his ramming at you is the thing you want to worry about. Ow. 